Hello, humans. We are live. Cool. So I'm still writing my intro here. That's that's all good. So welcome to the United States 4th of July. Happy past Fridays, Canada Day to all of you in Canada. And to the rest of you, well, welcome to Monday. We, we are getting ready to bring you a show on a topic yep. that is near and dear to my heart and caused Fraser to go, what? So, yeah. 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 Some kind of conspiracy theory on your part, it but, but I'll, right. I'll roll with it. Sure. No problem. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I totally forgot Canada day. How? how? Uh, what do you mean? How do I forget? I don't know. Just, just not paying attention. It's just okay. July 1st. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess yeah, like we're... for me, every day is the same for you. It's really Groundhog's Day, isn't it? <laughs> well, we just, yeah, but there's that for sure. I mean, we're, we're really kind of focused on, on, in theory, we get the final approval on the shop, on the studio today. Oh, awesome. So like right now, they're, they're up there putting in or doing the final tweaks to the heat pump. And hopefully the inspector will come by at some point today and, and give us the green light so that we can actually start using the facility. Although there's still a few more things we got to do. We got to finish off some stuff on the floor. And then there's a ton of like excavation work that has to be done to kind of put the landscape back around the building before we can start to really plant things and, and yeah. use the space around it because it's sort of like all, you know, it's all pulled back when you build the building, everything has to be put back in, but, but it is exciting. It's exciting that we can start to use this space for, yeah. for our intentions. And, uh, man, have I got a lot of plugs where my, where my office is going to be, where this, where the desk is going to be. I got four internet connections coming into it. It's all wired up. I got this lo cool lighting, strip that sits on the wall that runs around the whole window so i just oh. flick a switch and and it, i get a i get a, a a ring light or i guess a square light around me that i can change the color temperature and match it to the color temperature of the uh of the pot lights on the on the ceiling that so amazing yeah it's going to be great so in theory i can just come in and flick one switch this room is ready to go and then I, and I'll have my regular, I'll have a physical background, but then I will also have a green screen that I can pull down if I need to. So I, it's I'm be, uh, really yeah. hoping that by the time we come back from a hiatus in September, I will be able to ask you to produce occasionally because we are about yeah. to move into the construction phase. Yeah. We had the ceiling removed from the studio and then I quickly fled back into the studio because it turns out there wasn't good internet in other parts of the house. Um, but like half of our basement is on one circuit and we'd been running one of those outdoor bright orange po power extension cables like you mm -hmm, usually mm -hmm. use with a lawnmower all the way across the basement so that my studio computer was on a different circuit. Different the circuit. Yeah. And yeah, I've done that. Yeah. So, so we're actually yeah. going to have like an electrician come in and add some circuits and that is partially being motivated because we're also getting the air conditioning fixed. And just like Cersei uh, encouraged us to do, we're going to get heat pumps for the attic. Yep. So the attic's going to be fully usable, full year long. We are basically turning our house into a fully functional house. And I'm not getting a new car. This was kind of the decision. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, definitely, you know we're not going to be <laughs> getting anything else for a while yeah. while we while we digest the expense of of building the studio but it's uh it's pretty exciting and just like you know all the stuff that i'm going to be planting all of the you know it's kind of a you know the wildlife we've got this this man have you ever used the iNaturalist app yeah it's really good oh it's so good and the and then and so it, you just like pointed at any plant and just goes oh this is a such and such plant and you're like okay yeah. great and then the merlin bird identifier you just you just put it on and you just press a button for your record audio and then it just listens around you and then as it hears bird songs that it recognizes it just goes oh there's a there's a warbler oh there's a robin oh, oh there's yeah. a 
northern flicker etc it's amazing and so you just build this life lit like pokemon's almost like you're you trying. you know i caught a rare tree swallow yesterday in my bird app which that was just amazing. amazing yeah yeah um so okay now <laughs> apparently there's so so someone's just talking that that my audio is louder than yours that is unsurprising i can fix that yeah um I need to figure out how to turn off the auto sensitivity for my mic because like every day I'm in here changing the input level, changing no, the input there you go. level. I hear you're way louder now. Yeah. In my, in my, which right. is good. Probably. Yeah. It's we're I mean, I don't hear what the, again. what the final output mix is, but, uh, okay. All right. There was something else I was going to say. Anyway. I forget. I'm sure I'll think of it later. Okay. Apparently people are saying now that perfect. Okay. Great. All right. I need to open audition. I just realized I forgot to do that. Okay. There, there was this moment before we went live of, oh shoot, my computer is, is struggling more than it should. And a sudden reboot followed by a, oh, it worked relaxation of, but nice. wait, I wasn't actually done setting everything up. <sighs> All right. So this is Astronomy Cast. This is 649? Correct. All right. And so I guess next week will be our final episode, 650. I should probably that mention season. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll mention that in the intro. Okay. Cool. And how we normally wouldn't be having a recording this week. Last week normally would have been our last. Mm -hmm. That's silly JWST. Yeah. Yeah, I'm already in hiatus mode for the rest of my life. But I know. James I Webb know. just, just I, won't let I'm out. holding on to this season for two extra weeks and hating the entire thing. And we're gonna do a, we're gonna do next week at a, after. So we're gonna do next week yeah. after the reveal. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to I'm thinking the day after would probably make the most sense. It's, so like, a, it's like a process today is the fourth yeah so the 13th no wait so seven days from now that'll be the 11th so next tuesday Would've, is the release and i'm thinking next tuesday wednesday release we, we do wednesday okay that yeah. sounds good yep all right are we ready i'm ready all right i'm pressing that record i press record I'm pressing the other record we are recording. All right. And it's raining here slightly, so I don't know if people can can hear that, but hopefully that won't. It's a light rain. It's not a it's not a heavy rain, but it's a constant yeah. rain. So, all right. all right, let's get into it. Astronomy Cast, episode six forty nine. Why does everything happen on the holidays? Welcome to Astronomy Cast, our weekly facts based journey through the cosmos, where we help you understand not only what we know, but how we know what we know. I'm Fraser Kane. I'm the publisher of Universe Today. I've been a space and astronomy journalist for over 20 years. With me is Dr. Pamela Gay, a senior scientist for the Planetary Science Institute and the director of CosmoQuest. Hey, Pamela, how you doing? I, I am doing well. I am super excited that this is our penultimate show. Mm -hmm, of our penultimate season. show. And yes. Next week, so normally we would like end the season with the show that we recorded before 4th of July, but with JWST's images coming out next week, we're hanging on a little bit longer than normal. Yeah, so we're going to stick around for two extra weeks, two extra shows, and be able to talk about the images of the first images from, from James Webb. But we'll be a couple of days late in when we record it because the images are coming out on the 12th. So we'll probably record it on the 13th and then, but I think it'll, the episode will still come into your hands at roughly the, the same time. So yes. you don't need to worry about it, but we will be changing our schedule for, <clears throat> if you want to watch the show live, we'll be changing the schedule so that we will ha be able to talk about it after the fact. So, uh, so stay tuned for that. It'll be, this season will definitely go out with a bang. Hopefully not with a bang. Hopefully more with pretty pictures. Sure. I'm metaphorically. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that significant space and astronomy events seem to happen during the holidays? It's not a coincidence. There's actually a reason why. Today, 
we'll talk about some of the key events that happened during holidays and the underlying rationale. And we'll talk about it in a second, but it's time for a break. And we're back. Now, when you described this idea for a show, I was skeptical. And then you mentioned a bunch of events and underlying rationale. And now I'm starting to come around. <laughs> <laughs> but I had never noticed this. But it, clearly you have. Um, right. So so for me, it's it's been like my entire career, I've been explaining to family members why I can only sort of celebrate the holidays with them because my career requires me to sacrifice almost every holiday to science communications. And I am only one of many, many humans around the world who fall into this sad category of disappointing our loved ones over and over again for so, science. So let's, <clears throat> let's, let's provide some big examples before we talk about what's going on here. And, and like the, the most recent big one has got to be the launch of James Webb. It was. On Christmas Day. And that one wasn't actually scheduled as a holiday ruiner. It just turned out to be a holiday ruiner. So yes, in, in December 2021, uh, JWST tried over and over to launch before Christmas and various things just kept not going right. And we ended up with a stupidly early in the morning on Christmas yeah. Day launch. And I, for one, decided I was going to sleep through it because I had reached and, that point in my career. And it was like like even stupidly early, earlier for me yeah, um, because I'm Pacific Standard Time. So I think it felt like it was like three in the morning. I was yeah. up yeah, covering was like five something here and I was you. not up. Yeah. Yeah. So I was covering the launch of James Webb at three in the morning on Christmas day. Uh, and uh, you know, like Christmas day is not a big deal in this house. It is mostly just a regular day. Now, you know, now that the kids are out of the house, you yeah. know, we, we use it as a chance to sleep in, did not get a chance to sleep in. <laughs> And, and this is an almost 50-year tradition. Um, heck, it's almost a 60-year tradition. It's, 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 a, it's a tradition since 1968 with Apollo 8, where they circled the moon for the very first time in a piloted spacecraft on Christmas Day, getting us all the quotes that we see used over and over and over. And they didn't have to launch so that they were orbiting on Christmas Day. This was a purposeful decision hmm. that these astronauts would risk their lives and potentially die for the holidays. Right. So now let's. So so if James Webb was an accident, yeah. uh, and you mentioned Apollo Eight, give give me some other examples of launches or mission major mission events that happened during a holiday. So, so Viking 1 was supposed to launch on New Year's 1976 uh, for the bicentennial and it, it failed. Things go wrong sometimes. And then it was supposed to land uh, 4th of July, didn't quite make it, but that's okay. Uh, instead, in 1982, on 4th of July, the space shuttle landed uh, STSS STS-4, which was the last test flight of the space shuttle on Independence Day with Ronald Reagan right there in California <laughs> to, to add a boy the space shuttle program and say it is now regular flights ahead. And and it just keeps going from there. Valentine's Day, 1990, we had Voyager 1 take the pale blue dot photo. And, and I just kind of love the poetry of they could have picked any other day, but basically yeah. Voyager 1 wanted to say, I love you, man, to the planet <laughs> Earth, and took a photo of us on, on Valentine's Day. Did, now, did they take the picture on Valentine's Day or did they release image on Valentine's they Day. They took the photo on Valentine's Day. Okay. All right. 
keep going. Okay, so we have Valentine's Day 1997 with Hubble Servicing Mission 2's first EVA. So sharing some love with Hubble. And uh, 4th of July 1997, we had the Sojourner Rover and the Pathfinder Lander. That was for me a, a graduate school event where I really started to realize they're doing this shit on purpose, aren't they? Now, was that the landing or the launch? That was the landing. So, right. so they they manipulated their schedule to make sure that landing of Pathfinder with Little Sojourner Rover that uh, I have seen compared to the size of a corgi, which delights me to no end. Uh, that was timed for Fourth of July with NASA essentially doing an all hands on deck to celebrate this success as we returned to Mars after this huge time period where there really weren't that many planetary missions. Now I don't understand the why the Fourth of July is an important day. I mean that's three days after Canada Day. <laughs> I know. Why I does know. That matter? Well, How there weren't important? any arms involved with Sojourners, so it wasn't as important for Canada. And so here <laughs> they were heading for U.S. Independence Day with NASA missions. Right, right. And, and it's, it's really part of, of NASA being called on to share the excitement, the knowledge of what we're learning, and so much more with the American public as part of their, well, being part of the U.S. government. So when you have an American governmental thing, administration, you're going to celebrate Fourth of July. It's just the way it goes. Okay. I'm sure you've got more. I, I do. Uh, so Christmas 1999 was the, the space shuttle's final EVA servicing mission. So that was kind of a happy Christmas, everyone. Have a space telescope. Uh, I just love that, that idea. It wasn't the last servicing mission. It was the last EVA of that servicing mission in 99. Uh, there were two more that weren't on holidays, it turned out, but uh, that, that 1999 one sure was. And as we start to enter this century, we start to enter a lot of, hey, let's do this over and over with various missions. And All right. We're going we're gonna to continue this in a second, but it's time for another break. And we're back. So the conspiracy theory deepens. Mm -hmm. Let's see how far this rabbit hole goes. So, so as as we enter the two thousands, a a new emphasis uh, comes down for we shall release on social media, new media, all the forms of digital media. We shall live stream all the space goodness, and and this is something that really started to happen with Shoemaker Levy 9, but it took technology a few years to catch up and catch on. And it was in, in 2001 where everyone is really starting to at least have heard about the internet. A lot more people are on it. And the Cassini flyby of Jupiter with Io transiting in front of Jupiter, that was a New Year's 2001 gift to the world that came to us from both the European Space Agency and NASA, all shiny and bright and wrapped up for us. And but like, do you think they planned to yes. have that flyby happen? Really? Yes, they they actually juggle the trajectories just enough to have things these things occur on holidays. And part of the reason they do this is when you're reporting information to at least NASA, I'm not quite sure how it works for the European Space Agency, you have to produce how many people were impacted by your event. You have to say how many people saw this. And if you have your random encounter occurring on a random Tuesday, yeah, at four in the morning. Right, right. 
you're not going to get as many eyes on what's happening. Now, holidays are typically slow news days. It's easy to reach out and say to all of the big media platforms, hey, we have this thing that's happening on Christmas Day, New Year's Day. Can you help us? And create a media storm around something as simple as a flyby. And orbital dynamics is fairly insensitive in the outer solar system to plus or minus a few days, which makes it possible to schedule things like this. Mm. Yeah, right. And you have your launch window time, you have your and then even like if you miss your launch window by a day, the spacecraft is still going to be doing a flyby within a 24 hour period. Well, you just and adjust so you can, your firings and you can catch things up or slow things down as needed with small maneuvers. That's crazy. Uh -huh. That they would that they would they would use a little more fuel to make or sure that less. they get their flyby or a little less, but they get their flyby happening during a time when they're going to get a lot of media. But it, I mean, it absolutely makes sense. I mean, you what do you do? You release good news on a Monday. You release bad news on a Friday, I yep. think. And you right? release a spacecraft on a holiday. On a holiday. Yeah. You release news about a spacecraft. And I think I, I mean, I remember working and, you know, I worked at an internet development company back for the sojourner landing and uh -huh. so i remember tracking that with great interest but it was you just refresh cnn or you refresh right. nasa website and see any new information but but they got you, you think there about it, refreshing for sure you and, but were now, a statistic here we are at like peak live stream and you can go watch a nasa mission and see a hundred thousand people watching some event happening simultaneously it's it's kind of crazy how and that has just got to be gigantic impact for for nasa and for isa and all of these yeah. groups that are working together so you know if people are not quite convinced that there's some kind of theme do you have more of these examples oh my goodness yes and cassini <laughs> is is one of the major to blame ones so so christmas 2004 was the day they released the huygens probe they could have released it earlier. They could have released it later. They released it Christmas Day 2004. And they did it so it was timed to actually hit the primetime news Christmas Eve here in the United States. So we had a Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Huygens release, uh, followed a few days later by New Year's with Cassini doing an amazing flyby of Iopetus. It was just like, yes, we shall do the things. And, and so Cassini really said, this works. Look at all the attention we're getting. And pretty soon, just about everyone else started paying attention to that. You remember Deep Impact when it mm -hmm. hit Temple One? Mm -hmm. that, was, that was a holiday. That's crazy. So, so that was Fourth of July, two thousand and five. Uh, all, all of the American space community was like another holiday where NASA makes something go boom. Right. Yeah. It's what they do. They make things go boom, and and with the space shuttle. We saw a whole lot of holidays celebrated, but for them, I think other than that, that 4th of July, and now we have fully tested the space shuttle. I think for the space shuttle program, the other one that was really important was 4th of July, 2006, when the discovery went up um, very much on that date on purpose because that was the return to the flight after the Columbia accident. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a lot of people really wanted to say, we're back, we're okay. And, and that's how you say things like that. You launch mm -hmm. on a holiday when right. all the journalists can be sad and all of the American population can be watching. You can be paying attention, yeah. Crazy. All right, we're gonna talk about this some more. 
but it's time for another break. And we're back. But that's it, right? That's got to no. be all of the no. examples. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> it was so so this is the episode where a lifetime of not again NASA is is coming out. And no. and like I said, this is done very much on purpose. What what you find when you're an academic is is you lose a whole lot of times that other people consider vacation to your profession. Um, and, and to be clear, it's not just the missions that ruin the holidays. We have the American Geophysical Union uh, big meeting every year is usually about the week of December 12th. So you spend all of Thanksgiving madly getting ready for that. The American Astronomical Society meeting is always held both the first week in June, right after Memorial Day, often ruining Memorial Day weekend. Right, and, and right after New Year's. And right after New Year's, often requiring you to travel over New Year's. Oh my God, it's all starting to come. <laughs> it's true. So, so like my entire career, every yes. Thanksgiving, every Christmas, every Memorial Day, over and over and then they just keep taking the 4th of July away with missions yeah so 2015 do you remember what happened 4th of July 2015 again 4th of July is just a regular day do you remember what was happening June 1st no they were getting ready to fly by Pluto with the New Horizons mission it made its closest approach on the 11th but they really started the hoopla on the 4th mm. of July as okay. they started to get close enough to release images of the tiger right, the first strikes. pictures. Yep. And, and it, the, go ahead. Oh, no, that's it. Yeah, they, we, got, we got the first pictures. So I come back. You can then, see the heart. That's when we think we saw the heart on Pluto, right? Yeah. Right. So, so another holiday gone. This was followed the next year by 4th of July 2016 being when Juno entered orbit of Jupiter. January 1, 2018, New Horizons did it again. This time it was at that little... Ultimate Thule. Right. Yeah. It was at Ultimate Thule. And then Christmas Day 2021. And it's not just NASA. Over the years, we've also seen completely random, have no good reason to ruin holidays. Statistically, I guess some holidays should be ruined events occurring. Do you remember a particular comet that liked the holidays? No. Because it was Thanksgiving, which is a U.S. holiday. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I don't understand. Again, Thanksgiving is in October. <laughs> where so, it so, so while there were many things that happened on October 10th, and I should have pulled all of them, and I didn't think to do that. Yeah. Uh, Thanksgiving uh, 2013, we had a laptop sitting on our um, sideboard in the dining room, providing us coverage of Comet Ison, because that was yes. the day it came out from behind the sun and we were all waiting to see if the comet survived and was going right. to be the comet of the century. So now you're telling me that comets are planning for US holidays? I think that's a bridge too far. I, I think that one is just the statistically random, some holidays right. are destined to be destroyed by random events. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder if there's a similar list of these for the Chinese holidays, like the Chinese New Year. That would Chinese, be so cool. Yeah, right. And that's like the big one, but there's a bunch of other fairly yeah. significant holidays. And now China is, you got the, they've got their rover on the surface of Mars. They've got their orbiter. They've got their space station. They've got astronauts flying to the space station. They've got their lunar missions. I wouldn't be surprised if they're starting to take a page because you go on to Chinese. Um, Weibo and WeChat and things like that. And the amount of people that are watching the news there about various Chinese space exploration events is bigger than what's happening in the rest of the world. 
Like it's it's yeah. astonishing how much interest there is in 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 Chinese missions. So, it's, have uh, you be ever been to, me, to yeah. China during a mission? No, I've never been to China. Okay, so I just happened to be in China for a conference uh, during one of their uh, uh, human space flights, and when we were in Tiananmen Square over by the entrance to the Forbidden Palace, there was this giant uh, TV billboard, uh, Megatron, mm -hmm. and it was showing live video of the astronauts in space. That's cool. Well, yeah, so I'm sure that in Times Square they've periodically shown spacecraft, but I don't think they provide general coverage of NASA TV on any of those massive screens. And it, and it would be interesting if the, if the European Space Agency for various European holidays are having this happen as well to, I guess, boost support for space exploration. It's it's remarkably hard to figure these things out because there aren't a lot of calendars that go through and systemically uh, list all the dates for all the things. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of hunting and pecking is required to track things down. But, but you're I, able to search, like you're able to search for significant spaceflight events that happened on, say, July 4th. And I also remember a lot of these from having to explain right. for so the many trauma. years yeah. why I can't join people to go out and celebrate. And I mean, it's, it's really ridiculous. It's in the category of the universe is trying to kill us almost, except lighter, the universe is trying to ruin the holidays. Yes. 4th of July, 2016, it what not 4th of July, Valentine's Day, uh, 2013. Let me get the dates correct. Valentine's Day, 2013, here in the U.S. It was early in the morning, uh, February 15th in Russia, was when the Chelyabinsk uh, okay. meteor now, came through the atmosphere. Now you've gone crazy. You've blamed so, comets. You've blamed, you blame, you're blaming comets hitting the earth, asteroids hitting the earth. All right. I can't follow you down. So, the, so this, this one is hole. not on purpose. This is simply the universe, <laughs> right? Using random statistics to randomly yes. destroy holidays, but late at night, which is not when you expect your phone to blow up when your husband is in the house with you. Yep. On Valentine's Day, my phone blew up with with many a human yep. saying, "You need to get out of bed and, and get on the internet right now, and right then you now." Me, yeah, and then yeah. you called me. You never call me on the phone and you right. called me on the phone and you were like, uh, do you see what's happening in Russia? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I guess the, the point of this story is that a, a chunk of it is clearly intentionally planned by the mission planners, but also randomness allows coincidences to happen yes. commonly enough for us, for us humans to see patterns where they, they don't belong. Um, coincidences are kind of an amazing thing all right well that was that was super fun super silly and i think <laughs> from, i hopefully now as we go forward people will start to notice they're like wait a minute yep. why is this story breaking today wait because a minute because it's a holiday and because no one loves holiday. journalists yeah yeah well you know no one loves journalists anyway <laughs> we need that all right. Well, thank you, Pamela. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Fraser. And I forgot to open the window ahead of time. Oh, again. Beth tried to remind you too. Well, I rebooted. I had it open, and then I rebooted. I, I hurt myself with the reboot. Hold on. I'm sorry, Allie. I am sorry, Rich. I am making your editing harder while I search for the correct identity to open. So You're making it worse right now. Identities. I know, but it's take. I'm filling dead air. I am filling yeah. dead air while being sad. All right. I have the names. I have the names. Thank you, Fraser. And thank you to all the people out there who make everything we do possible. We are getting ready to go on summer hiatus. And we are so grateful that in the past, most of you have stuck with us through the summer. 
We hope that all of you will stick with us through the summer again this year. We will continue to post content on Patreon for all of you. This week specifically, I would like to thank Gabriel Galfin, Connor, Sam Brooks, and his mom, Helga Bjorkog, uh, Thomas Sestrup, Burry Gowan, Stephen Veit, Jordan Liu, Ke sorry, Jordan Young, Kevin Lyle, Jeanette Wink, Bar Andre Livesval, Andrew Proleska, Venkatrash Chari, Brian Kegel, David Throg, The Giant Nothing, Aurora Leiper, David, Gerhold Schweitzer, Will Hamilton, Buzz Parsec, Ron McCoy, J.F. Rougette, Kakao Sarif, William E. Krauss, Robert Plasma, Laura Kettleson, Les Howard, Jack Mudge, Joe Holstein, Gordon Dewis, Adam Anise Brown, Frank Tippin, Alexis, Richard Drum, William Baker, Wanderer M101, and Zero Chill. Thank you for chilling with us, Zero Chill. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> bye bye, everyone. And now they save. after figuring out where the window went. There we go. Six, four, nine. All right. One more. And this means that in 2024, we will hit our 500th episode. We already hit our 500th episode. Sorry, our 700th episode. Right. Oh, so I'm <laughs> reading, uh, and finally reading Andy Weir's uh, Project Hail Mary. Isn't that good? Hmm. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm. You're not very about... far in yet. I'm about halfway into the book. It's super weird. Once you figure it out, though, it's delightful. Um, and I'm enjoying it, but I'm also a little annoyed because <laughs> because I think that I mean the 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 life form that is that he invents for the story that is causing the problem is so clever that he spends a lot of time unveiling his cleverness bit by bit and it it could have it's taken up whatever a third or a half of the book and it could have just been a couple of pages and and i get why he's doing it but i'm a little annoyed <laughs> and it's and it's the same kind of thing is the martian but with the martian the events were happening in real time while with this book essentially the the thing was discovered in the past and so he's having to go back in time to tell a story to account for it and so it is feels unnecessary and i suspect i hope they will cut they will refashion it in a different order when they actually make the movie which oh they're making they a are. movie of it yeah yeah they've 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 paid for the rights to do to do a movie of, of it so I so i haven't so i haven't got to the end but i mean like no question the ideas are just so cool i'm i'm 100 percent on board um but i'm a little i'm a li there's less good characterization and more isn't this an amazing idea that i've thought of it's and going to star so, ryan gosling oh there you go yeah He'll be, okay. He'll be great. I can see him being a high school teacher. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. So, so, so have you have you hit the uh, role of heroine in the story yet? No, no. It no. it it will. I'm at the I'm at the first I'm at the uh, first contact point right now. So so, uh, by far my fa favorite random mention of drugs ever is in this book. Okay. Um, yeah, that's all, right, all well, I can I'll, say. I'll, uh, I'll it, let you know. It it had me. I I was listening to the book while pr planting a garden, and <laughs> and I just randomly started laughing, and and there was much confusion while I was randomly laughing while gardening. 
And then I'm at the same time reading, because I'm listening to the book on this one, and I'm yeah. reading the third culture series book right now, which is Bringer of Weapons? Anyway, I forget the name, but but it's not gripping me in the same way that the second one did, mm -hmm. but but I kind of like, there's some bits and pieces that I really, really love. That that the culture, the culture in this is sort of like this post-industrial civilization, and they have the post-scarcity civilization, and so everyone has everything they ever want, ever, and the ships are intelligent, and 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 the ship that's this sort of like sleek, weapon-adorned battleship is taking the main character on this, acting like a fairy. And the ship can, inst all the ships can, you know, they're all intelligent. And they get to choose whether or not they want to be a warship. So yeah. they get built and they get their personality and then they just get to choose and decide what they want to do from that point on. And so they can opt out of being a warship. And so, but this one, uh, but they can also have a, a way that they interact with the crew. And and so often it's usually just like, you know, it's a computer terminal or a disembodied yeah. voice, or sometimes they'll have a drone that'll walk around inside the ship and that'll be the, this one chose a teddy bear and the teddy bear wants to cuddle. I apparently and does not read this book in the, the yeah. culture war series. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so the, well, it's not the wars, it's just the culture, but, but okay. the, um, but, and so, yeah. And so the, and so the, the ship is interacting with the main character, but also just wants to, be cuddled like a little teddy bear yeah it's so, I, it's so weird okay i i will clearly yeah. need to go read that currently i i am doing a reread but, of the but first the second one is so the good. second, like, the one, second is one brilliant the second one is so good like if you love yeah. games the second one is just like i know you love Skip to go the into first the game one. Well, it's, the first one is great too, but the first one is is weird and and out of connection from the rest. Yeah, right. And so the the other idea that I really like in it is is they they essentially uplift civilizations, the culture. They do it very yeah. slowly by providing them technology very sneakily, and try. But they have very specific, uh, more moral like morality rules. Mm -hmm. that you have to adhere to if you're going to continue getting the benefits of the culture's technology. And if you break the rules, then they disappear you. And, and, and they make it very clear that that's the consequence. Consequence, if you, you know, if you, they're going to get, they're going to let you regrow your organs and they're going to let you do all this stuff. But if you, but if you use that technology to oppress people, then you're just going to go away. They might even just replace you with another with a with a robotic version of you so anyway Arjun is asking did you do your book club on discord no so this is what we're planning this is you know I'm, I'm putting a couple of books that people wanted me to read into the queue and then i'm going to start up the 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 book club over the summer as I, we, I feel uh, like i need to join it. this <laughs> yeah we haven't really figured out the, the format i think the the simplest format is that like people really want me to read books and tell yeah. me what i and tell them what i thought and so I think the simplest version of it right now is, is we're going to have a list on Goodreads that people can manage and they can throw new books in, they can vote for existing books and they can just, they can just be in charge of my queue like and I'll just that. read them one per week in the order that people are choosing for me and tell people what I thought of the books. And, and it's been like, oh man, like I love reading. Yeah, but I also love video games, and I also love audio books, being outside. And, you yeah, well, that's exactly audio books. One hundred percent. Yeah, you can put an audio book on, and then you can go and garden, and the you know the time just disappears, even though you've yeah. just broken your body. You've been in, you've been entertained the entire time. So audiobooks are are absolutely wonderful. Yeah, one hundred percent agreed. Um. Yeah, I'm currently rereading Old Man's War because I decided I needed comfort food. And That's such a good book. Yeah, yeah. it really, really is. So yeah, I love Old Man's War. Um, I'm eagerly awaiting Brandon Sanderson's suite of books that he wrote during the pandemic that he did a Kickstarter printing, an audio hmm. version of. So, That's cool. Yeah, I, it's, I feel like it's time to like go stock backer kit and see when things start shipping. 
But it's, but it is funny. Like it is easy to add. I mean, audiobooks you mentioned is one way to add books to your life. Yeah. The other way is like, you know, a lot of people listen to us on astronomy cast as their shut down ritual at night, right? which is fine, but a book will put you to sleep too. Yeah. Yeah. Ex it, it, I think people feel more morally obligated to rewind books than they do to rewind podcasts. Sure. But I mean, but I mean, like when I read a book, like I can feel like half an hour in, if it's night bedtime, half an hour in, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, I just had my eyes closed for 10 <laughs> seconds there while I was reading this book. Okay. It's time to go to sleep now. Yes. And so I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And so, but, and, and I, I totally get like having, listening to people talk as well, or, you know, I'll put on a YouTube video, but just listen to it for audio as someone is droning on about yeah permaculture gardening practices <laughs> she's like oh, right <laughs> so um and yeah. it all is very effective but i think reading is in the end you'll be you'll be happier that you read than 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 if you just listen to something so i'm not going to i'm not going to say don't listen to us to put yourself to sleep please do but also find ways to put reading back into your schedule it's important yeah it it's one of these things where like i'm reading a fitness book to go to sleep because i need to read the fitness book but it puts yeah. me to sleep so i have learned if i try and read it in the afternoon it will still put me to sleep so i might as well read it when i'm trying to go to sleep yeah yeah uh, i have I, I have similar stuff that i'm that i'm that i'll watch in the middle of the day or, or read and yeah, I'll be starting to pass out yeah. and it's like one in the afternoon and I don't, I'm not a napper and yet this will make me nap. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And actually um, Chinese, when I watch Chinese television, it'll, it'll put me to sleep. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's like, it's really like I have to focus if I'm going to try and get any sense of what's going on. And then if I, if I, lose focus mm -hmm. then it just turns into like a background sound that is now putting me to sleep so yeah it's funny i i get that it yeah, yeah russian it doesn't usually put me to sleep well what did you see i mean i don't know when the last time you tried watching any kind of russian media yeah that's true yeah maybe you know if you understand it too well, but who knows, like, like clearly there's something about having people around you talking yeah. that helps you go to sleep. It calms the brain because otherwise you just be, I don't know about you, but my brain is just going bzzz, yeah. you know, all the time. Well, oh, do this, uh, do that, what do this, like, you know, I, I used to listen to the BBC going to bed and two bad things happened. First, I accidentally trained my brain to fall asleep to British accents, which meant when I was listening to a talk by uh, Jocelyn Bell Burnell, it was a struggle to stay awake and that was horrifying. Uh -oh. And yeah. then the world stopped being boring enough to fall asleep to and instead started being panic causing. Right. So yeah. yeah. Well, it's all the media you choose, but I, but I also get that's the stuff where I, like, I, I, I won't listen to podcasts because I, my podcast app is set to auto delete stuff after I've listened to it. Right. And, and, so, but I want to watch this stuff. I want to listen yeah, to this stuff. Yeah. So if I listen to it, then I pass out, then I miss it. And so I will only listen to stuff that I consider to be disposable. And that's why I'm really starting to, starting to think, no, no, reading is the right way for me to do it to go to sleep is reading but yeah so what do you have planned for the summer so i uh, we're even putting daily space on hiatus this summer which we mm. haven't done before because yep. my team has informed me my house is hot and they are tired of it not having air conditioning yeah which is fair the air conditioning fair. died two years ago and that oh. made hang out a thon and Cosmoquesticon, not pleasant. So we are getting an electrician in to upgrade the electricity so that we can upgrade the air conditioning. And for the first time in the 
15 years we've had this house, we are actually going to add appropriate heating and cooling to the attic. Mm. So uh, the Cosmoquesticon, which has been moved from July to October, is going to be uh, much more pleasant for everyone involved in the production. And I'm really hoping that everyone will please go buy tickets for it because it's going to be amazing. Um, and I'm going to be providing updates to the planning for that all summer long. Um, we are also going to be doing a reboot of all of the websites, launching Citizen Science again. All the things that it turns out I just couldn't quite get my act together to hmm. do while streaming, we're going to do over the summer. But mostly we're getting air conditioning. It sounds and like a lot of work. I'm I'm gonna be gardening. That that's works. The, that's why well, you know, eighty acres of land I, that's that was fairly recently cleared and is bare dirt. I gotta I gotta get it covered up. So um, we've been researching local wild. We have this meadow that we that we've got, or I guess it's a place where trees haven't grown, and so we're planting this meadow. And so we're trying to figure out what are all the cool native species. And we're just going to be planting this meadow out over the fall into the summer and, you know, late summer into the fall. That's amazing. So that it'll be good to go next year. And we've identified about like 60 different flowers that we want to put into the meadow in different areas. Some stuff that's really good by the, like near water seepage and other stuff yeah. that's better in a little bit of shade. And, and then also I'm trying to plant a whole bunch of native berries. So like we, a thing that my wife and I do is we go berry hunting in the, yeah. in the forest and it's fun. We love it, but, but I'm building, I'm trying to see if I can manufacture a sort of a temple to the berry. <laughs> and so I've built this, um, uh, like, a a spot where I've like got a lot of like wood, woody material with dirt on top and I'm planting different native berries into this pile. So, then, so the, the audience keeper of maps in particular needs to know are you getting bees we're not getting bees you have bees. So, well we have native bees we have we have um bumblebees and we have uh um we have mason bees which we do propagate but uh bump but honeybees are actually problematic oh honeybees okay. are honeybees are bad yeah where you yeah. are they're not native they're european they're not they're not native where you are either oh yeah so honeybees so the problem with honeybees okay. is that they actually they are they essentially are taking away habitat from native bees I and so this. yeah yeah and so you actually don't want honeybees because they are they will you know i mean obviously there's a lot of flowers to go around but um, there are many, many species of native bees that you're trying to encourage. And the honeybees are, you know, it's like they're cattle. They're the cattle, of the insect world. And so if you, if you let cattle roam a landscape, you're not going to get deer. So that's now, the, uh, that's our mason want. bees like to eat our garage. Is, is your house in jeopardy? No, our mason bees are different than yours, I think. You have car are they carpenter bees or mason we, bees? We have both. Yeah, you're right. We have carpenter bees and yeah, the mason okay. bees, and the mason bees will move into the holes made by carpenter bees. Right. Yeah. So mason bees will live in a will live in a hole and and we we were kind of astonished because our mason bees are sitting outside all winter long and it got down to whatever minus sixteen Celsius and we're we were sure they were dead. But oh boom bunch of mason bees popped out they didn't do great but but mason bees are so much fun they're so great i love them um you can buy mason bees and then you just set them up outside and you get like a little plastic gadget that yeah. that has bee holes in it and then you can yeah. kind of take it apart at the end of the season and then pull out all the all the bee uh larvae eggs well they're they're like little um, cocoons they're little cocoons and you can pull out all the cocoons and then you can clean all the, the 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 holes and then you put the thing back together it's sort of like you know it's like two halves of a circle right all the way through and then you can set out the the cocoons in the springtime and then they'll they'll pop out the males pop out first and then the females pop out and then and you've got to have like the flowers ready to go and they come out pretty early 
like our mason bees will come out in like March and it's pretty tricky to have a lot of flowers for them ready to go that early. But, and then we've got swallows, which we've been, I've I been building swallows. a bunch of swallow boxes. Yeah. Um, and I think I mentioned this last week, right? We got cougars, we got <laughs> bears. We have this bear again, he's coming by almost every day. This, That's uh, this little, awesome. yeah, he's a little, he's a baby. Like he's clearly like first year, second year, maybe. Yeah. And uh, very skinny, very hungry. He's, you know, because we're not quite at berry season yet. And that's when they put on all their, their fat. Uh, we've got nighthawks. So it's just, it's wildlife central. And, and my plan is just how can I multiply the wildlife by orders of magnitude, by planting more and more interesting things for them to come and you check out. You need a so, camera trap. We have a bunch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's how we knew this cougar was visiting our property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could definitely start, you know, once again, like we're still it's just in this limbo where it's yeah. like, I can't do this because I have, because that's not done yet. I can't do that until, because that's not done yet. So we're still like five steps chained together, hopefully one today when we, in theory, get our final inspection from, from the city. I so get we can that. actually start yeah. using the facility. So that's the, that's the plan right on. All right. We'll reach the end of our, of our episode 24 hour wild. Yeah, I, I will. And my plan is like, we have small boxes. We have, um, I'm going to build some bat boxes. And if we get any takers, I will totally put a live stream camera in a bunch of these things. So people can see, or the if people want to see our bear. I'll, I'll, I'll make some pictures available of the bear as we, as we go. So. I, I want, um, you need an Instagram that is just your camera trap, and I bet that there's like a zap or something where you can set it that's up. That's a good idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just keep posting all of the weird wildlife that we uh, that yeah. we spot. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. That's fun. All right, uh, we've reached the end of our show. So thank you everyone for watching us today. Thanks to all of the moderators. Hey, there's Nancy Graziano. Nancy, <laughs> thanks for watching us on YouTube and on Twitch. Thanks to all of the editors, producers, and behind the scenes for helping make this show possible. Pamela, for bringing the brain. And we will see all of you next week, but not at the normal time. It will be Wednesday. Not on the normal day. Wednesday at a time of our choosing. Yes. So stay tuned. All right. All right. Thanks, Goodbye, everyone. Bye, everyone. See you next week.